It's Greg Gervais from uh, Rig Nation, oversee uh, Awakening Church as well. There's a bunch of other stuff. Uh, just super excited to be here. Just got off the got off the phone. Just kidding. Just got off the broadcast with. Uh, evangelist John Ramirez. So that was super awesome. Hopefully you guys got to tune in today, but I wanted to talk about something that every single believer should hear. Every single believer should know. Uh, I believe that God wants to fire up something for every single person. I believe that this uh, revelation I'm going to be talking about today is going to increase uh, the ability of your mindset to believe, the ability of your mindset to move forward, the ability of your mindset to actually have identity and lastly, to increase your ability uh, of yourself to have a grip on God. And so today, obviously, we, we, we used to call this uh, living in transformation. And that means my goal is just to see you transformed. My goal today is just to literally see you transformed. So thank you guys, Bri, uh, Wumi, Fearless Remnant Ministries, Lady uh, Danique for joining, uh, Grace, uh, Nick, the remnant, and uh, Kanye, uh, Kanye Downey. Uh, Cheryl, what's up? Today's nugget. So thank you guys for joining. I'm going to pray. I'm going to believe that the Spirit of the Lord will just reach right through the right where you're at right today. I believe in the Spirit of Revelation today. I believe that it is crucial for the, us to have this understanding that I'm going to go over today. It's a supernatural, crucial um, <clears throat> mindset in the body of Christ that we need to see today that we aren't seeing. And so I believe we're going to do this, and I believe by the help of Jesus, your life is going to be changed, that you're going to begin to see in such a clearer format. And uh, what's up, Mr. Bridges in the house? Um, your life is going to have as much a clearer focus if you'll accept this. If you choose to accept this, right, um, you know, this message will self-destruct in five, four. No, I'm just playing. It won't. But I promise you uh, that this mission will change everything in your mindset if you'll believe it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for your covering over every single person, every one of us, over our ears, over our eyes, of our uh, understanding, God, over our hearts, God, that there would be no misunderstanding that today the Spirit of Jesus would pop out, okay, uh, uh, God, pop out of the screen, would pop out right into our hearts, would grab us, would wrestle us. Father God would challenge us to believe today. Holy Spirit, I pray you'd make an imprint. Holy Spirit, make an imprint inside of our hearts. God, I thank you. Call us to mobilization. Call us to the army of God. Call us into a place where we're never the same again. Call us to a place, Father God, where our hearts are truly, uh, God, intrinsically in love with you and passionate for your name in the wonderful name of Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, God, that you are the spirit of truth today and you would reveal yourself in such a powerful way. I think... Um, so thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Hey, Bianca, what's up? Apostle uh, Thada um, uh, from India, good stuff. Uh, you know, today I want to talk about something. I want to talk about this mindset. I want to talk about, number one, the problem and, that I'm seeing in the church, the problem that we're seeing, the problem that is statistically there in the church, and the problem that we're seeing, the problem that we're st uh, statistically seeing, is that although people sometimes go to spirit-filled churches, radical churches, hardcore churches, or even nominal churches, they're all still focused on getting this one thing, and that's their life together. They're still focused primarily, if we're going to be honest here, this is what we're seeing. So many people getting tripped up with so many um, tripped up with so many uh, uh, emotions, emotional damage, uh, uh, just things in this life that are always upsetting people, things that are always tripping people up. And I believe I can tell you why today. I believe this is the, why we're, we're going to go into a little bit of a revelation today that'll maybe set yourself free, that'll pour out his Holy Spirit and bring liberty on the inside of you. Because there's so many people getting tripped up. There's so many people being confused. There's so many people being up and down, uh, like you know, like a toilet seat. There's so many people all over the place that seem to struggle. And today I could be talking about the demonic, but I'm not because I believe for the most part, um, if we'll shift our mindsets, I think that we'll be able to uh, decrease with any attacks of the enemy. And this is why. So th th we're going to get into this. I believe that the church today, and, and you can agree with me or not agree, but I believe we've trained people to come to church and how to live life. I, it's not your fault, so take a deep breath. Don't take any condemnation from this. This is meant for an awakening. But churches have of the, as a whole, thanks Jazz, uh, churches as a whole have trained people how to be church attenders and how to survive life. It's almost like we've trained people 
how to live life, train people how to be a victim. I'm even going to say this. We've almost trained people how to be a victim, how to deal with not, oh God, I hope you're okay to hear this. How to, God coming through on your situations, how to deal with less than a uh, perfect uh, Old Testament promise coming true reality. And we've almost been sitting here culturing up people to hear good words. Oh my gosh, I hope you can hear this. We're hearing words that don't challenge us. We're hearing words that don't preach the gospel. We're hearing words that don't speak um, uh, the truth. We're hearing words that help us deal with temporary uh, things and hearing words that help victimize me. Like people are like, oh my gosh, you know, they're just doing this because of this. They don't recognize your value. They don't recognize how great you are. They're not showing you enough respect. Instead of preaching the gospel to realize what we're in, instead of preaching the gospel, when we ride on people's pain and we build up people's pride on what they should have or shouldn't have been receiving, we're actually destroying the life of Jesus in those people's hearts. Oh my gosh, we've been feeding the flesh and we've been, as pastors, sorry, as a pastor, we've been making you weak. We've been feeding you not even milk. We've been feeding you fix me, fix my marriage, fix everything that Jesus told us not to focus on. We've been primarily prioritizing on to help people get better. But what we've done is made a weak army that is consistently under the attack of the Lord. And, and now pay hear what I'm saying consistently under attack, so seemingly from the enemy. I'm going to show you why you're under attack. I'm going to show you why this is in just a second. But we've been under this thing where people have been seamlessly, consistently under attack from the enemy. And it's, it's the purpose of the enemy to get you to focus on self-repair, on self-needs, because he's always going to bring the fit instead of leaving you alone. Why are you saying this? Because all he's got to do is trigger a personal need. All the devil does, I promise you, if you're going to be honest, this, just pay attention. Ah, this is like spoiler alert. All the devil does to get us off is actually keep tripping physical needs, keep tripping emotional needs. Who done it? Who didn't do it? Who gave you it? Who didn't give it to you? Or what did I get from God? Or what didn't I get from God? I promise you, if you think about this, we've been teaching people why or how to deal with victimization from people and how to deal with victimization from God. Why did someone treat you wrong? And why did God not give you what you're supposed to get? This is really what we've been uh, teaching people. And because of it, we have this group of people who are, are, who are completely weak. What's up, Kevin Collins? We have this group of people who are completely weak who actually don't know their Savior and can't seem to get out of this consistent uh, uh, attack, it looks like, in their life. And they're always under the influence of some kind of attack. So today, we're going to break it <clears throat> we're gonna break it what 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 am i saying we're all i'll get to that in a second churches are people churches are teaching people someone asked for an example some churches are teaching people how to actually like okay how to get a better better i'm, I'm not opposed to this because we need some of this help but they've been prioritizing how to get a better marriage they've been prioritizing how to feel good about themselves. They've been prioritizing how beautiful they are. They've been prioritizing how handsome they are. They've been prioritizing all these different amazing things that are outwardly focused rather than inwardly empowering. And so it's like, uh, whether we're focused on marriages, whether we're focused on jobs, whether we're focused on, on the, the amazing how to get promoted in jobs and uh, uh, ministry to surface level stuff, we're not focusing on this one thing that the Lord's actually asked us to. Now, thank you, Lisa. And you said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. But this is the problem. I have to, I have to ask for some honest people here. I actually believe that most people think they're seeking first the kingdom of God. Because we told you that seeking first the kingdom of God is showing up at church, giving your tithes, 
and all these things will be added unto you. We're actually, we've been teaching people that showing up to church, tithing, um, and, and being nice to people are actually fulfilling um, seeking first the kingdom of God. What does that mean? That we actually believe that the set uh, that churches have been asking from us, we serve on a rotation, we tithe, uh, we show up to church. We're, we actually got a three out of three out of four. Um, we get a three out of four Sundays attendance. So we know we got to be blessed by the Lord. And we've been teaching people that the great commission is actually to come to church. And the great commission is to serve on the worship team. The great commission is going to serve on, on a rotation of ushers. The great commission is to serve really on church. <laughs> Ah, when the great commission was to find people to disciple and literally begin to move them into the focus of Jesus Christ. Now, here's why the enemy can do this, because as long as you're now, now just pay really close attention. As long as you're focused on your destiny, even like this, we're focused on giving people their destiny. Hey, my amazing friend, Alex from Naos nation that everyone is love in, uh, when we even uh, when we're telling people even their destinies, when we're telling people about their marriage constantly, we're telling people about all their promises, all their promises, all their promises, all their promises over and over and over again. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's all we show people. We've made people who are still having to deal, and at the most, people who are radical who fight for this world's good to come into manifestation. That means the most radical people right now in church are the people who are, who are, who are using the word of God, which is amazing to get this world's good, to get their destiny, to get their, uh, um, you know, surface level. I'm going to say identity. So I don't want to hate on this because some of that is good. But what I'm saying is the weakness that we're seeing all over the church of God is because of this thing. We've been teaching people how to be getters rather than slayers. We've been teaching people how, why we're not getters instead of you better go slay. We've been teaching people how to have things in right order, everything almost notching off God's list of perfection before he, he adds all these things unto you. Now, stop. I am a firm believer of the Bible, 2 Corinthians 120. Every promise is yes to demand. I get it. But can I tell you something? Constantly and consistently telling people to say that God is good. Uh, uh, God is good. That's amazing. God will promise he's going to give you everything he promised you. Just hold on. We don't know why there's delay, but hold on. We don't know why God doesn't heal, but hold on. You know, uh, uh, you know, it's your season to wait. The devil's attacking with sickness. We don't know why this is happening. We don't know why this is happening. You know, we got to love our, we got to love our enemies. And that is the huge thing that I will not even come against at all. Cause there's not enough people loving their enemies. But for the most part, we've been actually tipping the scales on people surviving and attending than we actually are on them slaying. And I, I'll be honest with you, we've made such a weak church because I'm going to show you this. I can be a sinner and yet want my life together. I hope you just heard me say that. I can be a sinner. I can literally be a sin. Every sinner wants every part of their life put together. Every sinner wants their life. Oh, I hope you can catch my heart in this. There is nothing wrong with having every part of your life together. But can I tell you something? Sinners want their life together. Sinners want everything in their life together. Sinners want destiny. Sinners want jobs, family, finances. Sinners want friends. Sinners want to feel uh, significant about their life. They do. So why am I saying this? To make us feel condemned? No, to awaken us to this thing I'm about to get into. I believe, and I've said this before, but I'm saying this tonight just a little bit different. We've taught people how to make selfish look really holy by spending the, the, most, the most amount of time on us getting our good lives together by using the word of God rather than teaching them to do what Jesus said to do and teaching them to be an army rather than to be actually attenders. And, and this is going to make so much sense. I promise you, if this is not appealing, there's a reason why. If this is radical, there's a reason why. 
if we're not about our father's business, it's because we're persuaded God wants our business to prosper more than his business. This message, this message has come that God wants everything to, oh my gosh, to come together in your life. But Jesus didn't say things like this. He said, follow me and you're going to get a mansion. Follow me and you're going to get a brand new car. Follow me and your good husband is going to come running by. Shalababa. Hey, ho, ho. Oh, that one's deep. Just playing. He didn't say things like this. <laughs> he said, forsake all. Follow me. They're going to tear you in half. Your families are going to turn you up to put you in jail, to saw you asunder. The, the, Jesus said the complete opposite that pastors are saying. But you know why? He was narrowing the way so that people who had true hearts would obey rather than appeasing the consciences of many to say, God wants you blessed. God wants you blessed. Come to church. He wants you blessed. If you're just not bad, he wants you blessed. You're going to go to heaven. You just got to just don't be bad. Don't be bad. And people's badness has been in a relative terminology to someone who's really bad. But I had, <laughs> this is going to sound, this is, I hope you guys are okay with it. I haven't heard one person in sin who's living in that sin that hasn't made a good excuse to stay in that sin. That means the preaching of a morally ethic um, goal rather than the truly holiness of Jesus goal literally makes you feel okay because you're not as bad as Sister Sally, who's a prostitute. You're not, a, you're not as bad as, you know, at least I didn't have an abortion, Mom. At least, uh, you know what? He didn't like his wife anyways. Uh, 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 I know he committed adultery, with me, but she wasn't treating him right anyways. He didn't deserve that woman. I'm just saying we, we teach messages that cater to people's self-deserving of emotional needs more than we do the gospel of Jesus. And this is what happens. Let me just cut it straight. We teach people to be selfish so that the enemy has a right to afflict them with the needs, the very needs they're always claiming so that the very needs they're always claiming are out of order all the time. So they always have to stay in a beggar mindset, always at the feet of Jesus, just for the basic necessities. The church has disabled the church by preaching God's will is to, by primarily, let me say it like this, by primarily preaching that it's God's will to prosper. It's God's will to give you a good husband. God wants you to have a husband. God wants you to have a wife. And I believe, you know, it's good if he does, but you know what, uh, there's, in the New Testament, it's a little bit different story. I'm afraid we've taught people how to have an Old Testament inheritance mindset with an Old Testament follow through. The Jews would literally sit there and be holy and depend on God to defeat their enemies. We're in the wrong covenant. The Jews, did you hear what I just said? The Jews would sit there as long as they were holy before the Lord, as long as they tithed, as long as they did morally ethical things, then God would take care of their enemies. God would destroy the enemy and make boundaries all around them. In the New Testament, hey, uh, Apostle Sean, what happens is when you obey Christ, you get attacked. <laughs> now, just play it. We're protected. But in the New Testament, when you follow Jesus, people hate you. When you say the truth, people defriend you. When you're following Christ and saying stuff like, go make disciples, people defriend you and, and call you um, erroneous, call you uh, unrelatable. They call you completely uh, non-applicable, wh whatever. They call you old school and they call you harsh. The truth is, this may sound harsh, but I'm trying to get your attention. The truth is the church has done it. So if you're thinking this is a little out there, if you're thinking this is a little hard, just because you've been catered by the church culture that rubs you, rubs you, but the truth that rubs you wrong. But you know what? The truth is, um, Aziza, that, I'm glad you mentioned this. The reason why the church treats radical people wrong is because they're not the true truth. They're not the true church. 
People who get set, upset about your passion are just like Eliab, who ran away from Goliath all day long. He had a very good excuse for his denial of God's power to work through him to take down Goliath. But nonetheless, he was mad at David for actually becoming powerful. And this is the problem with the church that we've made. Again, if you're here in your nor normal, typical church, it's not your fault. Even if you're here and you've been Follow me consistently, even though you're upset most of the time. I'm joking. Even though you're like, I may offend you is what I'm trying to say by stuff I say. It's not your fault. We're coming out of the culture of a me-based mentality. We're coming out of a culture of a wrong gospel that we've taught the church. Um, by far, um, I'm going to be honest with you. And, and I haven't found, I, I don't think I've found maybe... Two people personally who are personally making disciples that follow Jesus, like actually adopting them, working with them and making disciples through them. I've only found a couple people <laughs> who are like, who are like totally making disciples of people, like actually adopted people. And those people are following the Christ in them. There's not a lot of people I know, even pastors, there's a lot of people who say, this is what disciples have now come and gather. We'll preach a word. And over 20 years, you may get it and become a leader. And at that point, we'll put you in ministry. But what if we would have went to that person and said, follow the Jesus inside of me? What if we would have done what Jesus said to do and said, follow Jesus inside of me? But I want to go down to that complete methodology breakdown right now. I want to talk about the heart behind the issue because we've taught people to be selfish yet somehow knowing an unself, uh, an unselfish savior. We've taught people to be selfish, but live in a covenant that is unselfish. We've caught, taught people to be selfish for their own needs. And I can prove this. Why? Because after we give our 10%, we don't think it's our responsibility to take care of other believers. And if you're someone here today who doesn't have money, who's always asking for money, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about people who have legitimate needs, who you know lose jobs the odd time or come into emergencies. We don't adopt each other because we think we've dotted our I's and crossed our T's before the Lord because we tithe and showed up to church. And because of it, there's no real adoption happening. Because of it, the church is actually losing people because it. When new people come to church, they don't even smell Jesus. I hope you can hear this. When people come to churches, they don't smell Jesus. They smell titles of apostles. They, they smell titles of, you know, bishops and ushers and, and deacons. They smell the titles. They smell the cliques of people who are comfortable with each other because we've made them to be cliques and clubs of people rather than to be life-saving stations that adopt us into the family. So, you know, just saying, if you, what's up, my friend, Hazan? Now, just saying, here's the problem. If you put on a show and, and, and invite a whole lot of people and hope some get saved in that show, that's the church today. But what used to be the church is a place where believers would gather where the Spirit of God would fall, there'd be prophetic words and encouragements. The power of the Holy Spirit would fill their people, and then they would be sent out again to be powerful, to be sent out to be again to be change agents. They'd be sent out again to adopt the lost. And I promise you, I remember, and I'm probably going to start it again. I remember this uh, my one of my one of the most amazing uh, biblical people I've met. I'm supposed to be going to the Philippines in uh, August. Um, to do a, a youth thing with them and then also uh, do some teaching and stuff, whatever, and, on supernatural stuff. But one of the most, he's one of the most biblical people I meet. Uh, all their people have discipleship groups. They all have at least one or two groups. And you know what he told me? He said before their youth pastor would ever, um, what, before their youth pastor would ever, uh, get hired full time in the staff in the in the in the pastoral staff or become a pastor. They had he had to have 21. Oh my gosh, he had to have be over 21 uh, life groups or house groups. He himself had to originate 21 house groups and oversee them before he was ever paid. <laughs> 
Nowadays, people want to be paid for setting up things. They want to be paid just to drive and attend church. They're like, well, I'm coming to church. I should be paid. <laughs> I promise you. That's how people think nowadays. But let me tell you, you know what he said when he came to you? And this is what I was going to say. He, sorry. He said, um, I'm going to have to get off here because I'm in a hotel. But he said, um, he said, you shouldn't let anyone on your pulpit who actually doesn't have groups of people that they're dying for. Um, and he said, there's too many people on pulpits who aren't dying for people. And it was just this amazing, amazing reality that there's so many people with microphones who haven't died for people. <sighs> there's so many people who... Who have mic who want microphones, who want ministries, who want paychecks, who don't actually die for people. And I believe that we've learned how to climb the chain of leadership rather than actually multiply the name of Jesus and what he said to do. Yes, I lowered my voice. And I believe it's time for us to cross that boundary and we'll become the army of God again. If we'll begin to adopt people, if we'll begin to adopt people and actually disciple people, number one, we'll see the world change, but number two, uh, our hearts will change. But number three, we'll see the army of God engage again. And I have to tell you this, um, what I was going to say, um, the army of the Lord will not ever mobilize when it's all about me and the devil knows it and the devil knows it about this me based gospel old testament mindset that's in the church i'm supposed to sit here and pay my tithes and sh and if i'm radical i show up to a prayer meeting and the government's supposed to serve me and everyone's supposed to serve me and it's and 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 god's supposed to serve me but i'm not supposed to do anything jesus said to do can i tell you something the devil has painted and given this picture to the church so that we would decline wait we've declined it's already here now look all over the u.s and a lot of other nations pete the the church of god is on a great decline why because out of a strategy mindset where we said it's it's not about methodology we don't have to do what jesus said to do we can we can disciple a different way that's right well preach a seeker sensitive message will have discipleship levels they can grow on that aren't even what Jesus said to do, but eventually they'll get it and become good Christians. The problem is we've made weak attenders who are always being attacked. And you're like, what about this thing to be free from the devil? I'm about to go there. We've made attenders who are always being attacked and thus making a need for people to always serve them and pray for them. They've been helpless, attacked victims who people are always needing to pray for. Now, it's not wrong to need prayer for. I'm not saying that, but we've made it. It's not your fault. Instead of doing this, making a selfless army who once we become selfless, we look like our savior. And now because we're selfless, the enemy himself can't touch us. Because now we're not even worried about our finances. Now we're not even worried about the things that have the world worries about. So the enemy doesn't touch it. I, I'm going to give this one story. This, this prophet told me one time. He said he used to be so stressing about everything. He was losing stuff in his life and he was stressing out. And he was so upset um, until he heard this word, like from the Holy Spirit say, just kill, then take it all. I don't care. I don't care anymore. It's not my stuff. And so he said the devil actually came into his room and said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And he said, I'm not alive anyways. You can take anything you want. Take my car. Take anything you want. And um, as soon as he said that, poof, the devil left, completely left, went, never touched him again. And, and his cycles began to stop. His attacks began to stop. Why? Because selfishness is actually a sin <laughs> that the enemy draws you in with so that he can have uh, 
a roadway into your life to attack you. Whereas if you forsake all and follow Jesus, you're completely protected because now you look like him. Now he's blessing you because you're all about him because love is protected by love and the devil can't touch love. Agape love, not romantic love, agape love. So I want to encourage you today that the Holy Spirit today is trying to awaken the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit today is awakening the body of Christ. Um, and he's trying to take us out of being an audience to make us an army. But how we're going to get there is literally denying ourselves and picking up the cross, which is Christ's ways of discipling people, Christ's ways of loving people, Christ's ways of adopting people and giving more than a tithe to other people to really start this movement, this Jesus movement that changed the world again. It has to be through you and me. It has to be now. The church way that we know isn't working whatsoever. And until we change and repent some of you are like, well, that's not real. I'm not going to get my stuff then. Exactly. We're more convinced about getting our stuff than we are doing his way. <laughs> um, but I promise you, just think about this. Father, I pray and I, I believe this is the one thing that believers need because if we will do this, the Lord will, the devil will stop touching you. You'll be an army. And then guess what? Disciples will be made. And there won't be an argument in the courts of heaven against you and me. People don't know this, but when we're always selfish, the enemy has a right to attack people. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. Bless every single person. I pray they would rewatch this over and over again. Uh, cause your Holy Spirit to open our hearts. Cause us to repent. God, in Jesus' name, let us see where we are. Let the army of Jesus arise. And I just pray that the adopting of people, the adoption of people, the spirit of adoption that was poured out in our hearts would be, God, poured out on the streets, would be poured out in ministries. The spirit of adoption of family, Psalm 68, 6, would be poured out and the life of the king would come alive in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, guys, it got loud. I mean, sorry, I had to change my voice, but um, it is... 1135 here. So love you guys. Like and share this. We'll see you soon.